If everything in this video goes to plan, you should be able to find a PDF version of three 1970s to 1990s popular science magazines in the description of this video. So I'm really strict with my sponsorships and it has to be something that I like and there has to be no rules whatsoever. You just send me something really expensive and I get to say whatever I, I want. And that means that I don't really get that many offers for things, but Caesar, they make a really nice scanner that a friend of mine, Curious Mark, he has one where it digitizes really well. But it was like $700. And so I thought, uh, I guess I'll just have to find it in the, in the trash in 20 years. But then, a few months ago, I had someone from Caesar comment on my, one of my videos, would you like to do a cooperation? I replied, yes. And I didn't hear back from him. So I was like, I want this thing. Because this is one of those things where you, you can't, this is like if Hobart wanted to send me a welder. I would gladly take a welder from Hobart. And so it's one of those things where it saves me $700 because I already wanted it. I, I've wanted one of these for a long time. So I, sought, I, I went to them and sought them out like, hey, you can't just offer something and not like follow up on it. And so like, oh, oh, sorry, okay. And then they were like, like, oh, we, we can give you the, the, the uh, ET Mini or whatever it was. And I'm like, I want the biggest one. And then uh, I also threw, I also name dropped my friend Curious Mark. He's like, oh, my friend Curious Mark, he, he used one in his videos and, and he, 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 he used the really big one. I think I would need that one. And they were like, wow, you know Curious Mark? And I'm like, oh my God. Thanks, Curious Mark. So I got the big one, the ET24 Pro. This is the one that I was wanting to buy, but now I don't have to. And I'm pretty excited. Apparently, I also get a discount code. So if you, if you put in uh, Caesar Renoa, I'll put it on, on, the, on the screen, you get a discount. I'm excited because I have so much stuff that I've wanted to digitize for so long. Like, we're gonna go through popular science magazines from the 1970s. I think today we can do three issues and um, I just can't believe I got a $700 camera for free. And this thing comes up as like, it, it comes up on OBS so it's like a webcam and everything so you could use it for other stuff if you wanted. It's, it's a nice little simple module. You see it's, it's trying to figure out where the image is. Now Dice, could you turn off the uh, light? And now I'm going to turn that off and then turn on these other lights. Because that's the thing, I have some things that are like from the 1850s that are entire newspapers that I needed to scan. And I thought I had to use a camera for it, but this is, oh, this is perfect. I was so close to buying one of these a few years ago, but I'm glad I did because now I got this. I've turned off this upper light and this is a light that detaches. It's like, I don't think it's optional. I think you can get it with it because it is a pro model. Oh. There we go. So with this very glossy magazine from 1990, if the light's coming from up here, it just makes a lot of glare. And if you have the light coming from over here, you get such a good image. So now, I'm going to make sure that there. Okay, so I have a trigger puck, which is a foot pedal. I'm gonna put this here. Oh, look at that. Then it has it on there. And it automatically recognizes that as the front cover. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go from the stack. We're going to go and do these top three ones. Or, no, yeah, yeah, we'll do this one. So we'll do June 1974, October 1990, and July 1976. I think that'll be pretty good. Scanned. 
people out there being crazy. Uh -huh. You can open the windows, Spice. Like we can, we can have the chaos. You know? Okay. There's gonna be chaos. All from right. Traffic rush hour. So be it. It'll add some humor. People are angry. I know. These drivers out there, like they just honk even at two a.m. It's crazy. I kind of wish there was a sound they would make. So it seems like it actually does a pretty good job of, it measures the 3D-ness of it, and then actually flattens, uh, stretches the image so it, it doesn't quite look like you're taking a picture of an open book. It, it stretches it to where it lays it a bit more flat in the image. Of course, the best option would be to have a piece of glass that I would put on there, but, oh, whoops. Oh, it did it, okay, my hand was in the way. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be so nice because I have those, uh, I have the 1850s German illustrated magazines that were actually the only last remaining copies of them, uh, 1857 to 1858, I believe. Mm, that, that page might cause some issues. So you're supposed to be able to use these little pieces here to hold the paper down flat, but as you see, it doesn't recognize them. For some reason, it's supposed to recognize them, and yet it doesn't. It doesn't cut it out, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that. And nobody else seems to have the issue online, so it must be that I'm stupid, because everyone else seems to have no issues with it, which I, I don't really get, but oh well. This is where having a piece of glass to put on there would really help things, but no oh well. Dice figured out how to get it working, but it's odd that like with that page, it was yellow, so it couldn't tell where the yellow thing began and the page ended. So it just cropped off half the page. So that, that's a little funny how that works. I would really like to go with my, my glass method, actually. I think that is much better. A lot more processing to do that though.
actually I'm gonna redo that one. Let's see how that does. Okay, I think I have it. You can definitely tell that the little page holders helped a lot. The later pages are a lot better. Export as PDF. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one kind of messed this one up, but it's just in the formatting. Oh well. I'm gonna rescan it. What the what the fuck is this shit? Hold on, hold on. Sometimes it just does this, which is absolutely wild. Maybe it catches my finger or something. Like why? I'm trying to rescan this and the, the front cover is about, well, actually, you know what? There we go, fine. Just finally get it off. And um, I cannot get it to scan this page again. It keeps doing this stuff. Like, what the fuck is this? But yeah, it just has, you know what? I've already opened this book so many times, scanning it like seven different times that we just have to move on and hope the next one works. And that PDF is going to be forever fucked up. It's interesting. So this one had the exact same issue. It's the uh, back cover. It, ha it, it cannot get it. It's just, it warps it and all sorts of stuff. It must be that... It can't handle the fact that one's a cover image and the other ones are pages, but I can't tell. Like, yep, yeah, did that fine. It does these fine. Well guys, I found out the solution to the problem I've been having. So every time I would scan the front page and I have to edit it because I didn't know how to do a single page in this facing pages mode, which is what's needed for these. And if I did the other one flat single page, it would, it would expect two pages. So it doesn't handle single page very well. And then whenever I would scan the back page, it would really freak out. And like it would get like an angled scan of this. It's because when it detects one, when I finally got it to, to detect one page, it thought this was the left page. And so then it was thinking, okay, this is right, and then this is left. Wait a minute. And so it would, be, it would be all messed up for the first page after the front. I was trying to figure out why. Time after time, I did it like 40 scans. The uh, pages two and three were so messed up, especially pages two. And it's because of that, because it doesn't know how to do like, one image for the front page. So I fixed it. I don't want to have the... Um, cigarette ads on there but there was this cute little turtle wax ad and so i decided whenever i do the front of this i'm just going to have this next to it and maybe i can delete it later but then i looked at this and it perfectly cut it out even though i was really holding this up like this and you can see the left side of the page which my arm is over now but it cut that out perfectly. So that is the key. And then it scans this fine because it knows this is left, this is right. And it knows what to look for. But if it thinks this is the left page and then this is the right page, it gets confused that there's black over here and something over here. And so it gets like this, it warps the image really weird. That's the one thing I hated about, I hated it back then and I hate it now. It's just the cigarette ads everywhere. Well, guys, I am done. And I'm really starting to like this thing. Whenever I get a piece of glass to put on here, this is what I always use for scanning receipts and so like that. 
put a piece of glass on there and it holds it down. It even, it even fixes the crumpling on the edges. It, it, it does so much more. So that'll be a lot better going forward than using these because these strain your hand. Also, it is amazing to be reminded of just how thick these magazines were. So this is what, two to, oh, 60 cents. This was 60 cents in 1974 and it has like a 100 and... 170, almost 180 pages on here. You get a pop of mechanics now and it's like 40 pages and it costs like $9. It's, it's just, in popular science, it's just the same. Gosh, we really, there really is no reason in getting the new magazines. And this is why I wanted to get these and also why I wanted to preserve them. Now I just need to go through here and... I had to do a few rescans so there's a few duplicate frames, but these should all be available in the description. This one has some things that I'm really interested in, especially the Sterling powered car. And then other things just like ads for uh, AMC cars and such. I thought this ad on page 15 it was especially nice looking. This one that I didn't even know was in this magazine until I started digitizing it, but Clever Engineering brings the electric car closer to your driveway. And this was before the city car, I believe, but very reminiscent. I'm so glad we don't have to use lead acid batteries anymore. It's funny to think how many ads back in the 70s were about saving gas fuel. I forgot how many of those ads were in these types of magazines. Like, there's another one. Ah, oh, here we go. Yet another one. It's just all over. It permeates it. You can really tell gasoline prices were starting to finally kill people. You know, I actually didn't know AMC was so big because you hardly even saw them, even in the 90s. They all, all mostly kind of rusted out. <laughs> I'm really interested in reading about this. Obviously, it didn't take off, but Sterling cycle engines sound pretty cool. And then we also have about Skylab. So I haven't read any of these, but we can read them together. I've gotten a little bit from them. Sadly, this front cover came off. I thought this card was really cute. So I kept this one. I threw away the other ones though because they're just garbage, like from um, work from home, like, like, like be your own boss kind of ads. You know, these magazines were just so full of those ads in the back. It's kind of great. Well, that's pretty much it. Here's three popular science magazines that I've digitized. They'll be in the description and also post a comment with links to them as well. This will be fun to read. I might do this more often as well. Actually, I intend to. Hope you guys enjoyed this reading and thank you very much for watching. See ya.